Hello, football fans, and welcome to this edition of the Billy Skinner Lamar Viking Football Coaches Show. I'm Bill Frawley, and with me, of course, as always, head Viking football coach Billy Skinner. Coach, how are you today? Doing great today. It's uh, it's Sunday, and it's another opportunity to get better. There you go. Well, coach, to begin with, I need to, I don't know if I call it restate or whatever message we had during our broadcast from Friday night. Um, I'll take the blame, but we apparently got a hold of some incorrect, inaccurate information that led us to believe that Friday night, even though I think you had said differently before, but uh, was that was the Vikings' chance to make the playoffs had to win. However, apparently that's not the case. You want to let us know kind of what the current status is with playoff picture. Yes, sir. So uh, believe it or not, we still control our own destiny. Um, you know, if, if we go and take care of business uh, Thursday against South Grand Prairie and we win by eight points, uh, we're in. We put ourselves in a, a situation to be in the playoffs. So um, it's as crazy as it sounds, we control our own destiny. So, you know, we're coming to work ready to um, do whatever we've got to do to get the kids ready and get the kids fired up and ready to go. Well, that's great because, uh, you know, a victory, hopefully it would be by eight points. It can be by one, but, but at least, yeah, there is some control in your own destiny and, and that's, that's really good to know. Well, thanks for clarifying that. Um, now let's go ahead and look back at Friday night's game against the Colts over at Choctaw stadium. You know, the Vikings came out strong in the first quarter building a 17 nothing lead behind a combination of strong defense and sustained drives, but explosive offense. Um, tell us what was going on through the first quarter. You know, there was um, – it's probably the best pregame prep we've had. It was probably the best um, leading up to the game from 3 o'clock uh, until that kickoff that we had looked as an entire team. Everybody staying completely focused, um, and everything was just – it was hitting. I mean, you know, our, our defense, they were doing a really good job of keeping a lid on some things. Uh, offensively, we were making some uh, plays. We scored on the first drive, like is one of our, our goals – um, and so early on, everything was going the way that, that we had envisioned it and the, the way that we had planned it, but. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess that'll be the segue yep. for the second quarter seemed to be a completely different game somehow. And it wasn't even a half room, you know, I mean, a halftime locker room talk for either team, but behind, uh, for something happened, the Colts had their own 17 point run. What do you want to say about what might have led to that turnaround? Um, you know, some of the things that in that first 17 point swing that we had, um, we kind of got away from it. We we did not take care of the ball a couple times. And, and one of them was just uh, a ball hits a kid right on the face mask and <laughs> bounces off and it bounces about 12 yards the other way. And it's right into a Colts defender's hand. Um Again, we knew that they were going to be very well coached, and they were. So they came out, and uh, they didn't panic on their end talking about Arlington. And so they kind of got back into their formula. And, um, you know, they made some plays, and, and we didn't on some stuff. So um, sure. it was just one of those flow of the games. You're playing a rival, and it's um, – there is no no blowout <laughs> in that. So, you know, we just they, – they did a really good job, and we did a poor job. Oh, gotcha. Okay, as well, both teams returned to the field after halftime with the score tied at 17. Uh, the teams exchanged scores in the third and fourth quarter. And just as happens, like you and I talked about, I think, a week ago, and, and a lot of the Lamar Arlington games, interesting and somewhat strange things happened. And, you know, and, and football, as much as any other sport, momentum is a big thing, and, it's, and it swings back and forth at times, it seems like. But uh, – you know, it, it had to be an emotional roller coaster in the midst of playing and coaching the game. Uh, for sure. I mean, everybody's got a little bit of that tenseness to them because of what the implications were for for both teams. And so um, each play felt a little bit more important than the next. And, you know, each big play felt like it was the, the greatest play that had ever happened. And, you know, sometimes the, the poor plays felt like it was the worst thing that ever happened to us in our lives. So, um, you know, it was one of those deals where we tried to keep managing our emotions and managing the emotions of our players. Definitely. So, well, I guess there were, there were a lot of plays that could, you know, that did swing momentum or, or the tide one way or the other, but I'll just tell you one of the things that stood out to me was when, Deshaun Wells 
basically blocked the punt with it's looked like on the replays and stuff from and through the binoculars with his belly. Mm-hmm. Is that about right? Somewhere in his torso region? That's right. Yeah, no, he just, he got back there so quick and um, man, that kid's having a well of a year. And anyway, he, oh he just, he showed up and, and made another huge play and yeah, the ball hit him right in the tummy. <laughs> and, and, and that play provided the Vikings when it looked like maybe, okay, we're, it's not going to happen, you know, not much time on the clock, but then it set up the Vikings with great field position and opportunity to go into the end zone and with a successful two point conversion, tie the game and put it into overtime. What was going through y'all's minds and everything? Uh, let's get ready for overtime. I mean, as, as, as exciting <laughs> as that was. Um, you know, we, we started talking some scenarios offensively, defensively, what we wanted to do if we won the toss, what that was going to look like, talked our kids through what overtime looked like. Um, and so really, yes, very, very exciting. But at the same time, we also understood there was a, a, another phase of the game that we were going to have to go and play. So uh, just trying to get relocked back in for that. That's got to be a challenge sometimes, I would think. Is that correct? Oh, for, for sure. <laughs> and, and I mean, just personally, you know, trying to manage that. Cause I, I can tell you, I was probably the most excited guy uh, at shock tall uh, at the moment <laughs> that we got that two point conversion. And, you know, uh, you know, it was, it was very fun. It was really cool and it was neat, but at the same time, deep breath, Hey, here's the next, here's the next challenge. Okay. Well, in overtime, then um, the Colts scored a touchdown on their first possession. So force the Vikings. That's the benefit of going second when you won the toss to play for the touchdown. Unfortunately, the drive came up short. Colts took the victory. Um, Coach, it was definitely, though, another game in this season, like all of them, it seems like, where the VFND spirit was in full force. I mean, this time beyond four quarters into overtime, would you please tell us how that makes you and the other coaches feel to experience the players going all out every week, regardless of the score and the situation? It, it makes me hopeful. Um, okay. You know, I, I talked to our kids about so much more than football and, and what's going to happen when they leave here. Um, and if, if they take even a, an inch of that heart that they show every Friday night, if, if they take even just a little bit of that, they've got an opportunity to do wonderful things in our world. They've got an opportunity to be great husbands. They've got an opportunity to be great fathers. They've got an opportunity to be great community leaders. If they just take that little bit of spirit that they have and they take it with them, um, those things are going to happen for them. And so I'm hopeful that, you know, when, when I see that, I'm very, very proud, but I'm also very hopeful that that's something they carry with them for the rest of their lives. And that just goes on with everything you've been saying all season and that's why you talk about we're coaching them not just to play well on the field but there's a lot of life lessons and kind of predicted that's what you were going to say but I, <laughs> I always enjoy hearing it again for, for whatever and and I think it's important for the for the fan base and the community to hear that though that's what's at stake it's more than just a game a season playoffs or whatever where you are talking about their lives and I think that's wonderful um, so the Vikings host the South Grand Prairie Warriors on Thursday night at Cravens Field. This game has a few interesting factors now, Coach. It's on a Thursday night, not a Friday, playing against your previous boss, Laban Delay, and then also playoff implications, again, controlling your own destiny. How do you deal with each of those factors from a coaching standpoint, let alone, you know, the players and all their possible distractions? There's really – there's one factor for me. Um, okay. And that's- I want to extend our season. I want one more week with our seniors. And so that's my focus. You know, what, what can we do to make sure that we take care of our business and we get one more week with our seniors? So, uh, yes, Coach Delay is coming back. Yes, we're playing South American Prairie. Yes, there's the playoff implications, this, that, and the other. For me, it's as simple as I want our seniors around at least one more week. And so here's, here's what we've got to do to get that done. Awesome. Anything in particular y'all are going to be working on or – you know, trying to fix, improve, whatever this week and tuning up for that game? Just get better fundamentally. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a broken record. We got we to be able to tackle. We got to be able to block and do those things. And so those are things we're going to work on. Um, we know that we've got to do a better job of getting guys on the ground. Um, there was some plays that number five made for Arlington High um, that, you know, we've got them wrapped up in the backfield or we've got them wrapped up here and, and you know, 
all credit to him. He's a great football player, but there's also some, sometimes we lost technique. And then uh, on the flip side of that offensively, sometimes we uh, maybe rushed through something and, and put a ball where it shouldn't have been. We're going to take care of those things this week um, and, and work okay. on them. But um, the big thing for us, it's always going to be about the Vikes and, and us getting better fundamentally and us getting better at what we do. Sounds good. And, uh, and I don't mind the broken record kind of thing because that shows y'all are stressing fundamentals and, and just what muscle memory, 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 and all that kind of stuff. It does kind of remind me when I lived in Florida in the early 1990s for about three years that I think they videotaped their um, weather forecast on May 1st. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in the 80s to low 90s with a 50% chance of rain in the afternoon. Yep. Cool evening. We'll see you in August. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was the same forecast every day yep. unless yep. a hurricane came through. I'm sorry for the diversion there. Um, all right. So quickly, thinking, speaking of this week, do you want to go through the Wednesday night uh, JV and freshman team schedules for us? Yes. So uh, Wednesday night, our JV, they're going to be at South Grand Prairie High School. Uh, with a 5.30 p.m. kickoff. Those tickets can be purchased online through the GPA ISD Athletics website, and it's online only for uh, their tickets over at Grand Prairie. So okay. uh, that's Wednesday night for the JV, 5.30 at South. Uh, and then our freshmen, they're going to be home at 5.30 against South, uh, 5.30 p.m. kickoff. I just said that. And right. they can buy tickets <laughs> online or at the gate. Sounds great, Coach. Well, we're looking forward to seeing a bunch of uh, Viking fans in the stands at both those venues on Wednesday night and, of course, on Thursday night. Was there anything else you wanted to mention? I don't want to push you on any other scenarios for playoffs, but just thinking about if it helps people to know, well, who do I root for in this game? Or is there a certain right. outcome? Well, um, yeah, I'll, I'll share two other scenarios. There's about six of them, but I don't want to get too too far into the woods. So uh, two other scenarios are if we win by any amount and Bowie beats Arlington, then we would be in. Um, if we win by seven and Arlington High beats Bowie, that would make a three-way tie between South Grand Prairie, Arlington, and Lamar. And there would be a coin flip to determine uh, the spot for number three and the spot for number four. So um, those are also two other scenarios that could happen. And again, there's a, there's a plethora of others. So it, it's, it's still in grasp. And the most important part again, is we control our own destiny. Well, and sounds good. So the simplest thing, let's just root for the Vikings to win by more than eight or eight or more. Let's root for the Vikings to win by as much as we can win. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. No problem on that. Yeah. Why, why am I complicating something you just simplified, right? <laughs> well, Coach, before we sign off, is there anything else you want to say or bring up? Yes. So two things. Okay. Um, we've got senior night on Thursday. Um, and again, you know, I'm talking about trying to extend their season. I want to keep those seniors around. Um I'm so proud of these guys. Um, there's about 30 guys that trusted us and, and, and work their tails off for us and do all the things that we've asked them to do. So we're going to celebrate those guys pregame um, on Thursday, uh, as along with our managers and our trainers, our, our Thor core cheerleader band, our drill team. So uh, Thursday is a big night for us because it's, it's our senior night and we get to celebrate those kids who have, who've poured into our program. And, you know, we just want to tell them and AISD just wants to tell them, thank you for, for all that they've done. Um, and then Tuesday, huge night, um, our girls volleyball team will be taking on J.J. Pierce, 530, round one of the playoffs, and that's happening at Coppell. Um, it's either going to be at their high school or their new arena. We're still waiting to hear um, which one's going to be available, but uh, once we get that information, we can get it kicked out, but that's a big one. We want to go pack the stands uh, for, for our volleyball team and, and, and cheer them on. Definitely. Well, that'd be great. And I, I think I might even be in town and be able to go do that myself. So that'd be cool. Thanks for the heads up. You bet. All right. Anything else, coach? That's all I've got. Well, man, we appreciate you every week making time for this. People love hearing from you, even the broken record parts of it or whatever, <laughs> but that shows consistency, right? For sure. <laughs> okay. Well, until next time, I'm Bill Frawley with head Viking football coach, Billy Skinner saying VFND. VFND.